It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And Rip Michaels was guest hosting all yesterday, but he's back again because we have your friends yes. in the building. My friends, too. Justina Valentine. I would like to think I'm more friends with you than I am with Rip. What? And so, you know. He that's... was offended because you said that he's thicker than you. But um, also, Linda Brown well, is here. Yeah, he is. You are Not still thicker you got the black girl butt. You got a new black <laughs> girl butt. You're still thicker than me, though. <laughs> Regardless, you're still thicker. Instead of buying a tiny home, you bought a butt. Okay. <laughs> and London Brown is here, too. Thank you. Good it to see you again. Absolutely. <laughs> I feel like, London, did we get you in trouble on lip service or were you good after that? No, I was okay. good. It was grounded in truth. They couldn't okay. They couldn't shut that down. It was solid. <laughs> oh, what'd you say? You was doing some of that white tea talk stuff? I was just keeping it a butt. That white tea talk stuff. That's what it was. <laughs> it was it was solid but no they, yeah. they was trying to I think the headlines be important because they flip the headlines around and us the headline got nothing to do with the actual response uh, but it was solid it was okay. good so thank you I appreciate that man shout we out to my boy Malcolm it. yeah Malcolm Mays came on and he's uh, you know he was like oh, Uncle Lou yeah, yeah Uncle Lou and, and Marvin were, were both there with us alright well let's talk about it because you guys have this April Fool's comedy jam now I didn't know Justina Valentine was on the show because she's not on the flyer right and nah. that's that's what I'm saying Angela because I'm like why am I not on the flyer but yet he asked me to post like five, six, seven, nine he want to utilize my social media but like I see London Brown's on the flyer now London um, Brown he I didn't, did I didn't see him post, post. Yeah, I didn't see oh. him post I see a whole <laughs> bunch of white tea talks talk about yeah that's white tea talks listen Talk about the hold on, hold on, Jay. This is the thing. What I do is, unlike a lot of the other people, I'm actually outside touching hands with the people and saying, yo, come to the show. Ooh. Never caught it. Thank God. But my point is, <laughs> I really be out there, so I support the show and everything like that. But I, I like the personal invite. But I did post. It's going up right now. Oh, Boom. that's because we bullied them into it. Right now. And Justine, so I always here? look out for Justine. I brought a white girl doing Black History Month to the Apollo and let her close. I don't want to hear it. That's risky. <laughs> and let her touch the logs. I don't want to hear that's hilarious. Out of her face. But, um, Tina you... Marie. <laughs> Hello. Um, but, you know, they, they fuck with me at the Apollo. And I think what it is... Um, Rip just really wants to juice me, even though, mm -hmm. he you know, when I, yeah, when I come out on the stage for, you know, April Fool's, like, I'm not going to be out there as long as, you know, some of the comedians, but I'm mm -hmm. still going to do my one, too. But he just wants to use my social media. Yeah, there's a lot of people on here. How do, how do like, the time slots get allotted? Because I'm like, who's, how are we going to have enough time for Kind of like a Diddy party. Oh, <laughs> wow. Wow. Just wow. That, this isn't live, is it? Wow. <laughs> what? What in the world? <laughs> Never been invited. I don't know. 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 He's uncomfortable. No, I'll, I'll be in the house. Man. Stay in the Take house. Take that. Take you that. Just, you just said you were outside, but now Which all of a sudden you're in the house. I'm outside. You're, you're outside come... touching people, He's but now we bring house. up a gay hands. party. I just say people. Hands. <laughs> See, that's change. don't be changing up the narrative. It gets weird. You don't have to post because you're outside, but now you just be in the house. I'm just trying to figure out which one it is right when it comes to doing certain parties and certain invites uh i say no i stay in the house uh -huh. but when it comes to dealing with the people directly and the fans of the show i'm outside Okay. Uh, all right. See, I gotta watch. See, it's now I know what you're talking about. See, see I told you. I know he's straight. Straight. Shut up, right? I told you, man. <laughs> you know what's funny, Justina? Our producer, Dan, over here. Hey, Dan. He thought that you really were in a relationship. We were talking about Ew, it. Ew, please yeah. don't tell me with Rip. Yeah. Ew, oh, no, 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 you know, and then oh, probably conceded. Yeah, with conceded, yeah. and so he's like, "Is she still with conceded?" We just conceded. banging Why stuff. You... It's no relationship. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Huh? I never knew you banging conceded. Just like a couple times. Not you know what you're saying is because he's very short guy. I didn't know yeah, I mean, when you when you lay down, you're the um, same size. But when I don't have heels on, we're like the same height. I, you really but no, no, I didn't know that. Huh? I didn't know you slept with. This conceded. was so many seasons ago. Wow. <laughs> wow. We just keep it going. Now, London, when it comes to let's do a white tea talk sure. right here, right now. All right. All right. So you think that's empowering? Like, because you always talk about how it's different for men and women when. It comes to sex and cheating and things like that, and so it's mm. empowering for somebody like Justina to say, "I'm just banging conceited. It's nothing." Yeah, I don't give him head or nothing. She said, uh, "Well, <laughs> she thinks it's you empowering." You can't go to my church. <laughs> I mean, it's, she can absolutely. People really do what they want to do as long as the energy is mutual. Okay. So you know, if, if she's cool with what she's signing up with, then she's that's solid. So London, if a girl came to you and was like, "Look, I just want to bang out sometimes," you're cool with that. I Man, I got too much. <laughs> she got to qualify. Oh, no. Nah, he, hold on. Uh, he's stuttering. Yeah. He don't know. He don't know what to say. Because I, I try to be respectful because everybody be flipping stuff around. But what I'm saying is like, <laughs> you got to earn that. You, I'm not just out here. You can just because you can. I'm Nah. And she got this. I got to see where she is and what she about and how she talk, how she move. I'm not just 
No, man. So you, you kind of want a relationship. No, no, no. I'm not saying <laughs> that when it comes to this scenario. Yeah, in that scenario, you want to feel like a connection, though. You can't just... It no, kind of sounds like a mini is, relationship. She right? just got to qualify. We ain't okay. got to be in no serious situation. She just got to qualify. What are the qualifications? <sighs> she got to first be clean. Okay. Mm. That's a good uh, one. She got to know how to not talk. <laughs> You want to mute? Clean mute? Yes, I'm on the list. Uh, guys are simple. Guys, look, guys don't have to like a woman to sleep with her. She so just needs to be. Can she mime? No, no, listen, this is true. Here's a way to talk for you. Guys do not have to like a woman to sleep with her. She just needs to be legal, willing, and breathing. Now, that's a fact. Breathing. Guys across the board, that's the those are the general, general qualifications. Okay, that doesn't sound very... I, I, it sounded like I, you I, said I, those are the Jennifer qualifications. So I'm just saying. Name Jennifer. I know. I'm just saying that what it is. <laughs> it's just if there's a flat, a flat basis, and we're just gonna do the bam, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Then that's it. But if you know, because that means also we ain't ain't no kissing and all of that. Uh, we ain't getting that close. Okay, so you're gonna kiss in the mouth. Back, that's yeah. good. We you'll hold back that. on some of your tricks at a time like that. Oh, for sure. We okay. can't. No, no. They gotta earn. They gotta graduate to that stuff. <laughs> so before that, no, they get the you know. They get the general general class. You ain't gonna get no supplies and no no had a diploma and degree. No, you just get a little certificate that says you did. You, you did get this. a certificate. You get a certificate. Participate. Uh, an with equivalency it. degree. Sounds participant. Like, <laughs> sounds like an NDA. Yes. Right. A little participant. Right. Sign this. Congratulations. Sounds like he want to give a nice and you know political answer. Mm-hmm. Last you know how they, they do. Last time they probably chewed you up. No, they no, did. they they didn't chew me up, pause, but like they you have to pause? they flip they flip things around it's crazy mm. well you know and i will say london because you do these yt talks all the time and you're always giving your input on relationships you're a little traditional i'll, I'll give you that okay. like it you know he's not like a very um progressive relationship type mm. of guy oh you mean i'm not i'm not doing the trendy the trendy comparison between you're traditional 50 and what you give him when i'm bringing to the table i don't do uh, no, none of that yeah no i'm just saying I, I'm not saying that as a, a right, right, right. negative thing. Right. Some people are very traditional when it comes to relationships. Some people are like, okay, we could just have an open relationship. You do this, you do that. I'm fine. I don't care what she did, where she's been. You're a little different in that way. But then yeah. that whole thing happened with Drea where you chimed in on that. She responded and people was coming at you. I mean, people people can feel what they want to feel. I don't. That's why, you know, I try to be, always try to keep it respectful anyway and mm-hmm. keep it grounded so that, because I know I got to stand on what I'm saying. Right. So if people really listen to what I'm saying, they'll they'll find the truth. Usually, grown folks get what I'm talking about. If you if you young and you know move recklessly, then you're not gonna really understand what I'm saying. But grown folks get it. She responded to you and no one else too, which was interesting. Like you were the one person, and I was like, because mm. here's the thing. Mm. I feel like you give your opinion on things. That one just happened to go very viral. Like, mm. and a lot of people were weighing in. So, what did you say? No, I'm just kidding. I won't make you say twice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go look it up when I leave. Here, yeah. <laughs> Can you clarify what you meant? Hey, man, I'm just, I'm just here to when I do my breakdowns and everything, whether people agree with them or not. Just do the research first and then, you know, double back. And the mm. positive side, it does bring a lot more people to be like, oh, he's been doing this because then that gets you a lot more. Sometimes you got to look at the good side of things, right? Always. People will tell you all press is good press. That brings more attention to people wanting to weigh in. And I think even if somebody doesn't agree with you, it's okay to have a conversation. That's all. Where mm. you guys don't Simple. agree. Mm. Justine is very, I think, progressive when it comes to relationships. Yeah, I'm like. Super. What does yeah. you, stick what you say progressive? What do you mean? <laughs> she a progressive insurance. She's... It's just like some days. <laughs> Some days I'm um, gay, some days I'm, you know, See, bi, yeah. some days I'm, you know. It's progressive. Do you feel like you have to be nicer now because he did almost? No. She no, never been I'll nice. be honest with you. After the Apollo show, first of all, you know, and I don't have what you would say many white qualities, but I am the bitch who called 911. Okay. Everyone's around him, eyes rolling back in the head. No one's calling 911. I go, oh, fuck. I go, hello. <laughs> I go, I go, um, uh, Rip Michaels, he's a, a part-time while now cast member, so take your time getting here. No, I'm just kidding. I go, he passed out, he's having a heart attack. I don't know what's going on. So uh, they come. Now, I was shocked nobody called 911. So I make sure he's good. Next day, I call him. I go, Rip. Make sure I'm good while she's out there. She's at the ambulance taking pictures of fans. She's like, <laughs> oh, you I mean, like, Rip, you want pictures? Like, move your body out the way. I can't. The ambulance, can y'all turn the lights off? Y'all blocking my light. So I knew he was good. He was doing the thumbs up this night. <laughs> no, seriously. She so, literally was taking pictures oh next to fans so in the ambulance. I was. Her, they wanted pictures. So I call him the next day. I go, Rip, you Gucci? He's like, yeah, I'm good. When the hospital back, I said, all right. I said, did you put some extras on it? He said, Justina, what do you mean? I'm like, you know, did you put some extras on it? Like, I know your heart was taxed. It was a long show. You were up and down the stairs. 
Um, but did you, you know, would you, you know, the eyes rolling back and the, the convulsing? Oh, the was that, see how Justina makes fun <laughs> of no matter most. what is going on. I was like, no matter what is going on. I was on, like, was you that, can't make fun of black hair. Was that, you know, was that real? <laughs> I was like, um, it's over for you. He had a deal on the line with Kevin Hart. I was like, Heartbeat Productions is uh, over for that. Justina I'm like, you know, is so <laughs> vicious. But he w- he told me that none of it was mm-hmm. fake. But you never know with Rip. You just never know because right. he's all about the moment. He's all about the press, so I just had to check. What? He told me it was real. And then, um, you know, I, I did a post asking anyone if they had a spare heart. Or okay. Like anyone Justina that... is the ultimate Which... prankster. She literally told me she was downstairs when I was in the hospital. And I was like, okay, oh, it's awesome. Oh, you came to see me? She was like, no, I would never come to see you. I'm in the studio. I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say that. Damn, I did... She is so cool. I did ask him what hospital he was in. I said, I have a new uh, stand-up I'm working on. I said, but if I come perform for you, you might, I might actually kill you. So I said, let me wait till your heart gets a little stronger. Just mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Out of this. Just yeah. the vision. London's like, I was not there when that happened. Just However, I was at home on live. <laughs> Here, here's what I thought. I thought he thought if he faked a heart attack at the end of Apollo, he thought he'd have better ticket sales for the April Fool's comedy jam. So I was wow. just, I said, I'm look at not white gonna, conspiracy. I said, look, wow, I'm not going to tell everyone if it was fake. I, you know, your secret is safe with me. I just want to know, was it real? No. But I know you probably were so concerned because that is your brother. Yeah, of course. You, you know, at the end of I was, the day, I was like, is... Rip. I was like, if you die, can I get the? Um, he had a Louis jacket on that night. I was like, I just want to make sure it's probably not in the will, but can he, I get yeah, it? That Louis jacket <laughs> is very nice. Thank you I very much. I only have one of them, so that's just what. I don't have a lot of nice clothes, but. I do have one or two pieces that I will wear everywhere. So you will see it <laughs> yeah. everywhere. It well, will he, get dresses, tired of he dresses very schizophrenic. Yesterday, the blue jacket he had on with the camo pants, I said, rip this. You know, the style is not to match. Well, Justina kills it because every time she has this brand and she just assigned what I forgot what I think it's Grand Theft Auto Hooker brand. <laughs> <laughs> Like I like it. Like she's waiting for. A, I like a to car. be consistent with the branding. What can I say? But uh, no, I love Rip, and um, you know, like I said, I wanted to make sure he was good. Um, but I still don't know if something happens to him at Barclay. Am I going to question him? Of course I am, because okay. he might be trying to sell tickets for our next show. In, in just always thinking, he's a businessman. He's just, a businessman. Justina yeah. is. The, that's why I love Justina. No matter what is going on, no matter how serious it is, you can see she will find humor in everything, and I thank her for that. Because sometimes when I'm down, that actually sense of humor, like I treating me, you treating me <laughs> normal, uh, makes me feel good. That does. Yeah. Well, well um, it was better for the documentary because when he was having the heart attack, he was like, "Get my other side, it's my good side." So that's why I was like, "Is he remember?" Oh, so you guys are doing a documentary on this? Or? See, I, I don't know what the hell you're talking <laughs> oh, about. See, wait, wait, wait. no, <laughs> See, there, there was a cameraman <laughs> filming <laughs> you though when you were on the ground and you told him to get your good side. No, so. I did not. I did not. But just then, it was always about. Now, London, let's talk about you for a second. All right, now that you're mixed up with this whole uh, April Fool's comedy jam, but you've been hitting the stages a lot. How is it in New York being on stage doing stand-up comedy in New York? New York versus like in Cali or even other places I think, on the uh, West. Because they are unfamiliar with me here, so I look like the actor trying to do stand up. Like I, um, I did like the acting first, and then decided stand up. But I come from stand up, right? So uh, it's fun. I mean, it's just I like the fact there are way more rooms here. Okay. Than in yeah, other cities. Yeah, there's always cities. something going on. So yeah, it's it's <laughs> been fun. It's good. I like it here. But you've been acting for such a long time too. I mean, How, like, so you were doing comedy even before you. Remember, I told you the show on Fuse, like, on yeah. The- so I was doing, I was doing stand up before we did uh, the hustle. So shout out to you and 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 all of you guys for uh, helping us get that show and and, and or you know making an appearance on the show. So yeah, I was doing stand up then too. Okay. So that was a little minute ago. That was back in two thousand. Because sometimes people don't realize how long someone's been at it. You know, right? That's a, I think. Especially with the show now, people think it's just kind of like, oh, he's just starting. This, and that ballers, it's, it's a process. Yeah, it's, it's a serious uh, work ethic. So I'm glad to even still be working. Was uh, did Raising Canaan get you way more notoriety than Ballers? Because Ballers was a big show too. Uh, it's just a different audience. Okay. Like uh, commercially, it was Ballers, but as far as the streets and the people, that was Raising Canaan for sure. It was just a different audience. Uh, so that's been that's been cool. New York has been showing a lot of love. I'm, so, I've been, yeah. I, you know, I watched that show faithfully, Raising yes. Canaan, and I'm always so scared from like I don't want anything to happen to him. Oh my gosh! If I don't I'm like, like if Uncle Mark died, like, I don't want him to go to jail. No, I don't want him to go. To no, jail. No, please, want him to we go. love you. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate you are so that. Good. The love is the love is uh, definitely felt. Especially, I mean, I go to other cities, but New York is really they cool, man. They, right. they a lot of people understand Uncle Marvin. That's the thing. I think if he was like. Uh, a, a pushover kind of a character it would be a different but since Marvin stands on business and 
He is loyal to the family. He got a lot of solid qualities, even though right. he be cutting up and eating. And he's still people. thorough. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it weird seeing him without something in his mouth? Pause. pause like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, but oh, I said pause. Oh. I said pause right away. The pause was yeah. attached. Yeah. But at least, like, mouth like, go crazy part two. Yeah. Hello? Go- but at least, like, a little piece of gum <laughs> or, like, a little <laughs> toothpick. Like, he always has something in his mouth. Pause. Yes. But I'm just saying, that's called the oral that. fixation. Right? Yes. And people I definitely really- have one in real life. But his character is always eating, and it's just so do- like Uncle Marv is. The and you illest. know what you think? What happens when his metabolism slows down? Because that's what happens when the people are younger mm. and they're always eating. But then when Uncle they get Marv, older, Marv, 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 Marv running around and, and he eats terrible, catching bodies. He's, he's always he's always on the go. And, yeah. But look, the thing about it too is on the real side of this, it was just an actor's choice. Uh, creating another layer for that uh, for the character, mm-hmm. so that even when he's not speaking, you're still interested in finding out Fire. what he's into. Right. So it just on that level, it's just an actor's thing, and finding ways to incorporate uh, who I really am with that. So so that is who you really are. You like to eat all the time. I like good food. Okay. So um, that I wouldn't was, say again, he likes good food. He be eating like all kinds of chips junk. Yeah. Like <laughs> not in real life. Oh, okay. I mean, okay. That, that, that's just something that you know is cheap. For production to just find some chips, right? Yeah. Because and it makes sense. It, that's Uncle all. Uncle Mar wouldn't be there eating like um, quinoa or, or something, right? Like right. That. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah, not back then. Yeah, not right. Then. We had that. chips and just so, stuff that's, that's accessible. Yeah. I'm thinking about all the junk I used to eat when I was growing up. That I look back now, like I was in a, a candy store. You know how they have the vintage candy? Yeah. yeah. And oh, I'm like, yeah. I really used to eat. Like, remember the candy buttons that used to come on the paper? Yes. And you wow. eat it, and it'd be mostly paper. But it's, you know what's so funny? <laughs> just watching like. TikTok and, and Instagram, when you get kind of stuck in a rabbit hole, it's so scary, everything that they say about food that we just, like, yeah. Yeah. never knew, like, growing up. Like, the other day, my mom was like, if we would have knew better, we would have, we didn't know. Like, you just mm-hmm. didn't know, like, that, you know, you're not supposed to get, like, a happy meal every day and, like, eat this and eat right. that. Nowadays, they're, like, with the kids, oh, this has, like, the... The red, um, it's got the different dyes and stuff right. in it yeah. that you're not supposed red to. All the dye. candy that's really yeah. harmful for you. Yeah. Or and the- even like milk. Remember they had all the, we, I talked about this the other day, the got milk campaigns, but really like we're not supposed to be drinking cow's baby milk. cows. Yeah. But even that, like how the food works, is, we didn't know about it because a lot of that wasn't there as much as it is now. Like now it's like they're putting things in the food, targeting and making sure that it's unhealthy. So that's why, you know, it's just, it's time to just, you grow your own food, really. Yeah, you never know. Like you, I never knew till now that like red dye, like Kool Aid dye, putting that in your hair, it's not good for your brain. Not. I'll good tell for you what, it, 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 it can't be good for your brain. Why? I leaned in for the science. I know. I'm learning right. science. I was I'm like, leaning he's in. So right. Leonard was right. But you know, but it's confusing too because sometimes I'll like save a video and I'll be like, okay. They said to eat this or do like this, and then you'll see another video. It's like doctor here, and it tells you the exact opposite. So it's just hard to know, like. Who's, whose trend is correct, you know? And every week they're coming out with something different. Yeah, not gluten is free, this is bad, that is bad, don't eat bread. The government knows, they're just not going to tell you, yeah. you know? And they make money off of certain things. Like, even if you think about things that are like, uh, you know, top-level carcinogen, but people eat lunch meat all the time. You're not supposed right. to be eating processed foods and lunch meat and things like that. That's why sometimes you go to other countries and the food tastes so much fresher right. and so much better and they're healthier, but then here you're like, why do we have such an obesity problem? Why do we have a lot of heart health issues here? A lot of that does tie back to that diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> right not, from everything you're eating. No, you know, and now people are doing the Ozempic mixed with it. Yeah. Everybody trying to get skinny. I'm still trying to get thick. Yeah, that's, you're on the opposite <laughs> curve. <laughs> you still five years ago. Uh, no, <laughs> facts. Let's do a, uh, another YT talk. Okay. You know, while you're here. One thing that you also talked about was, and I do um, chime in sometimes while he's on live, but oh, nice. one thing that you talked about was um, how women act so different around our man. Like, it's sides of us that our friends yeah. will never see. Yes. And you're like, and I know it goes the other way, ladies. We get it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, so what are some things that you feel like, as a man, you do when you're in love with a woman that, you know, your friends would be like, damn, I can't believe London's acting like that. Um, I think maybe... Well, let me set up, give, set up the premise of this, which is ultimately I feel like there are sides of us that only our partner gets to bring mm-hmm. out of us. And a lot of people felt like, you know, hey, my family know all the same size that my partner know. That don't even make any sense. Right. On a basic grounded level of this, when a man and a woman have been intimate, 
that kind of connection you're not going to get from your family members because they're not tapping in like that yeah. with you on an intimate level. That would be so weird. this is just <laughs> logic, just simple logic. That's very true. So when it comes to when when people try to give me some pushback, I know they're not slowing down the process. That simple. Just that. You can't, you can't tell me uh, that a woman can't say to me the same energy that she has with her man is going to be the same with her aunts. Mm-hmm. It don't make sense. Right. Yeah. They so, never saw you suck dick. I mean, unless they went through your phone or something. <laughs> You know, and they don't. Wow. Well, it's the wow. truth. Like, it's shit that wow. only your man sees. Wow. But, I mean, so with, with all of that, it's just like yeah. sometimes, uh, you know, even with your, even with a guy's time, a guy will, he'll make up, he'll cover some time. He may not have as much time for his family, something like that. But for that girl he wants to see and connect with, then he'll find he'll figure, little he'll move things. some things around. It is, <laughs> it is true because, you know, even me, like, I'm very aggressive. But, you know, when it's, when it's time and I'm you like to be with my man, I'm definitely, yeah, I'm submissive. And, yeah, choke me, throw me around. Well, you know, maybe, like, not too hard. But, you know, right. it's like I want to be, like, I want, you know, you to be the man. And I'm going to be submissive, which I, I don't think I have a very submissive personality. So that is true that it's different sides. Really? What if you a guy like asks, choking? Yeah. What if a guy <laughs> asks you to choke, <laughs> to choke him? Have you done no. that? No, that would be that. That would, for me, I'm not trying to do. Like, I only like a particular type of guy, and the type of guys I like are not going to ask me to choke them, put mm. a finger in their booty hole, nothing like that. Oh, you never um, know. That's not not the thing. not the type of guys I like. I like a very specific, um, you know, brand of dudes, and they're not going to want that. So <laughs> I like brand. very brand of dudes. Yeah, what type of brand? Like you know, just very like <laughs> black dudes that just came over prison. That's pretty much what she's talking about. <laughs> pretty much. Um, but just very, Big shout out to a boyfriend. Very, very masculine, very, you know, strong like that. I don't like, um, mm-hmm. you know, like guys that are too in touch with their sensitive side. I mean, I'm just kidding. You can be, but like, you know, I like a real, like, a what real if man. What guy cried in front of you on a first That's date? That's okay. Well, it depends. I mean, God forbid, For did his dad yeah. die? Like, yeah. you know, any we're all human. If something crazy happened and I'm with him and he gets a crazy call, let's on just say past, he starts talking about his ex. You're like, oh, what's oh, no, nah, that's crazy. It's, it's, yeah, it's, that'd be wild. That's dead <laughs> corny. You crying over your ex? Like, it's it's corny. You're crying over and definitely don't do it in front. I'm leaving. If that sound like um, last date, Rip had I hooked him up. One of my friends, oh, you were crying? He, he started crying about his wife, the paid actor, and he was like, it was crazy. I'm not gonna find someone else who's gonna do it for the same rate. And you know, that's, that's how that date. That's crazy. Rip is actually very hurt wild. over his, his Are you that's, really? That's wild. But I can't tell because when I asked no, him. No, he is. He's very hurt over his wife leaving him. He didn't even tell me. I talked to him all the time. At the basketball game, I was on the phone with her. And that way, when I heard it on the interview yesterday, I was like, wait, so she's gone? Like, what? Did the sag checks? <laughs> like, I just see, don't understand. See, now, every time you think Justina cares, she does not care at all. Because he was really I'm sorry, Are you, are was, you really like, hurt, You Rippy? know what, Justina? I just love you. I thank you for the jokes, man. I really do thank you I love you, you too. But honestly, man. are you really hurt? you guys man. are deflecting with each other, Yeah, right? she deflects. He is, he she is really hurt. Are you really hurt? Are you really hurt? Me. I appreciate you, Justina. Are you really hurt? I'm just going to say that. I are appreciate you? you for treating me right. What is this, turn into a TED Talk? No, no, but are you... Y'all ain't going to make me... Are you... No, no, are you really hurt, though, You know what I'm saying? I mean, but that's wild. Think about it. He's in the hospital, and she left him while he's in No, it's crazy. This is why I said to him this morning. Your heart... Stop working. She thought the checks were gonna stop. She left you. Now you're back doing the Barclay, and they're talking again. I mean, I ain't <laughs> no scientist. Hold on, no. you're talking again? No, she's trying to be funny. She, okay. was, she said that well, joke I just out there, her and she's trying to, and no. she's trying to do it again. Look, see, I keep telling you, I keep telling you. Ever since her boyfriend came home from prison, um, <laughs> it's been super. Happy. But but you know, but back to being vulnerable, like we were just talking about. You know, it is hard for men to be like, I am hurt or upset over for this sure. breakup because that was really. You know, I remember. They were married. Yeah. And but no, are you that. really upset about the wife? Huh? I think anybody in this world would be upset if that you thought. We're talking about you, Rip, not anybody in this world. And so, of course. That's a silly yeah, question okay. to ask somebody. Stop being a pussy. Put it in your set. Every time he gets really hurt, <laughs> almost dies, <laughs> his set gets even better. Like, it's like the closer he is to death, the funnier he it's gets. It's like that Tony Braxton are... album or like Mary J. Blige. People love when she's going through heartbreak, yes. cause it, which is unfortunate because you got to go through stuff mm. in your real life. Apollo was his best set. He almost died. Barclay, I don't want you to do that much better than Apollo because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much what bandwidth that, your life right? had left. But the the more pain he goes through, the funnier he gets. So. Is that true for you too, London? I think that's true for any comedian. Because all that stuff, I mean, ultimately, we gotta, it's therapeutic, a little key. I mean, whether comics admit that or not, but when you bring that stuff to the stage, what you realize is that the laughs are worth the vulnerability. So it's, it's a nice exchange. So you, at first, you know, when we first started, you were like, man, I don't want to talk about that and that because I'm uncomfortable and that's makes those are my insecurities. But once you actually go there, you be like, yo, like I said, the, the exchange of those laughs for revealing those pains because you realize like, oh, shoot, I'm not the only one who, yeah. who feels this. But I, I don't know about that for many other 
artistic forms, but like I say, of course, obviously with singing and, and different music, people feel what you feel. But fortunately for artists like us, that's a it's a great outlet, man. Are there things that it's hard for you to talk about though when you're on stage? Yeah, I mean, there there are some things that uh, I've grown to become more comfortable with because I just I've grown out of those things now, so I'm able to look back and say, oh man, I remember when that wasn't good and I was terrible at that. Because again, the payoff is like. The, mm-hmm. the bigger the last, I'm like, all right, cool. Now I want to find something more touching uh, to address. I think when you pour your heart out, even and to to to, to tag on that, even Richard Pryor when he went through what he went through, um, it just when you pour your heart out, I'm I'm at a different level of comedy now. So mm-hmm. me even being vulnerable enough to post that I'm in a mm-hmm. hospital, even enough to post and and tell people what I'm going through because I know someone else is going through that, and it is great to laugh at what you've been through because that shows the strength and the power. Like a lot of people saw myself as Rip Michaels. It's actually Rip Mike Heels. And that's what I've always tried to do with my comedy is actually heal people and make them go through things. So this whole entire journey, yes, it hurt. Yes, I'm still healing from it. But I'm learning and I'm a testimony for all the people that's going through this because I know someone needs to hear this message. When I was in the hospital, so many people said, Rip, I'm going through the same thing. This is happening to me. I lost my heart. My husband died. The the way I've been able to connect with people um, with what I've been going through, because I talk about it, all of it, whether Mm -hmm. good or bad, whether how much it hurt, how much pain I'm still dealing with. I'm, I talk about it. And it's therapeutic, not only for me, but for my fans. So if I can just help one person realize they're not going alone, that they're not, it's not just them, then I did my job. Two things. In the hospital, I love that you always kept a wild and out. Um, the hat on beanie on because he yeah. wanted to let people know that he actually is a gas member. That was good because it helped to go fund me. <laughs> no, and first two, of all, he's that's, his, his daughter put that on him. Right? Oh, my okay. daughter put that on me because I was like <laughs> so distraught because I was supposed to take that. We were supposed to do the Apollo then, and I couldn't do it, and I was so distraught, and I looked crazy, and I was like, I have to say something. My daughter just threw yeah. the hat on, and who knew it became infamous mm-hmm. that I'm in a hospital gown and wild I had just hilarious is killing <laughs> also, me, and everybody's going it, in. So. It's <laughs> wild that you've let people disrespect you and call you by the wrong name for the past for so couple long, decades, right? but you know, if like, you knew how hard it was to keep explaining to that people, but it's spelled like that. It's R I P. Yeah, I thought you just M I C H E. A- I thought L- it was like a Dwayne Wade situation. You know what I hate about his name? When he was going through the hard <laughs> stuff, you got to keep reading Rip. It just says yeah, R.I.P. R-I-P. Yeah. Mm. It's like, bro, it's him in the hospital, keep saying Rip, and everyone's like, oh my gosh, we thought we lost him. And I'm like, no, it's just his name. <laughs> so that's that's one thing during that time I wish you could have came with like a Rip moniker is just short for Rippy, so that's all it really Rippy, is. Rippy, yeah, Rippy. That's just short for Rippy. Now what about you, Justin? Are there things you won't talk about in your stand A thousand stand-up? percent. Um, that well, make you, like, what no, do you no, get sensitive? For, for What I get sensitive is literally what he always says. That's the, the most thing I hate that he started and he says. But what I've learned... Through comedy, like when I obviously got a while and out, I was there as a rapper to battle rap. And mm-hmm. really, the majority of our games really are music based. And there are some yeah. that are just like straight comedy, like talking spit. Um, but I learned that when you are willing to say things about yourself first, you kind of flip it on the person and it... Um, disarms them like if i'm gonna say first my ass is flat <clears throat> when it was flat uh when, if i'm gonna say like my ass is flat and this that and the third i'm kind of owning it before you could even say it and um it takes you know, the power away from it somebody takes, else saying it that's to exactly you. that you say it first so when rip kept hitting me with that man joke i knew he was coming with that so <laughs> i would sometimes flip it on him first and then like you say you kind of leave him powerless so it's funny because when i spoke to rip the other day because we really do talk on the phone a lot i was like you know um Fuck it. I said, maybe people want to laugh at me more than they want to hear my music. I said, I'm going to go do a little uh, 10 minute stand up set. Because, you know, when we do shows for the colleges and Wildin' Out and stuff, I am like doing stand up, but I'm freestyling. I'm just roasting, you know, the students in the crowd. But I'll mm-hmm. do that for like 10, 15 minutes. I told Rip, I'm like, I can do stand up. Maybe motherfuckers just want to laugh at me more than they want to hear my, wanna hear well, my music. Well, the rap up went crazy. Yeah, no, the rap up went crazy. That went I mean, crazy. the joint with Jada did really good. MTV supporting it. It's Neek on Bucks. MTV Live. Neek Buck, shout out to Neek Buck. So, you know, it's just, um, I'm like, maybe I should, you know, try the stand up. Maybe people just really want to hear me make fun of myself. Mm-hmm. They'll like that more. And you do have new music out, and I want to make sure everybody yes. knows. Voices is out right now. Voices is out right now, and that's from a movie I'm in. It's an independent movie. Um, I play a relapsing, recovering fiend in Boston's Methadone Mile. So has a really, oh, really str- yeah, has a really strong message um, for people in the you know drug epidemic, and you know everyone has a family member, a friend, a neighbor, somebody who's been affected by that. So that's uh, making its way in the um, film festival circuit. So that song's off of that movie and then like you said do or die with neek bucks mo money with jada kiss and lady shady 
Okay. Are you have you met Eminem? I haven't met Eminem. No, okay. I feel like meeting Eminem is like meeting Jesus. Like, um, <laughs> you know, I I don't feel like he's, you know, that accessible, which makes sense. You know, yeah, he's not like he's outside. Mm-hmm. Right. He's like London. He's in the house. He's yeah. not just London going be outside. Outside. Except for when he has a show coming out and he's touching people. <laughs> London, do you go to clubs at all or anything? Never? I see uh, London Club this comedy weekend. Club. You did? Okay. Besides it wasn't no comedy, comedy club. club. Oh, he was at a club? What club? Oh, he was getting freaky. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> he was like, what? See, look. Thank you. I'm back on Riptide. Rip <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He's under the bus. <laughs> no, I just see He no paused for a minute like... At I'm a cool little spot, out. at a, a shout the a static, uh, select a, a static spot, um, Fat Buddha. It, 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 you look real nerd. Was no one supposed to know you're out this weekend? No, I, I, don't that what, I don't know He's what. I don't know what. I don't know what. She she been doing this all day, so that's why at first I, but I, I don't know. But wait a second, did you really you did you do remember seeing me out this weekend, right? I was the one with red hair. <laughs> See, I'm, this all got the same look Rip Michael's had. So he, okay, okay. All right. all right. maybe he, oh, he wasn't so Yo, my bad. Let's move right. on. Move on. No, no, no. I'm gonna tell you. If I mean, my <laughs> grandma already posted, but I'd be outside. I was out. Uh, shout out to my man named Eric. He was out in Times Square, and we, we was out there on some musician type stuff. Okay. So yeah, that's where that's where I'd be low key. I'm telling you. You know, and, and growing up in this acting business for you, and we see all these things happening. Have you ever been to a party and been like, I gotta get out of here? There's things happening that I don't. No, nah, cause if it if it even feels like that on the approach, then uh, yeah, I got I got if I go to something, I gotta really know the people and the vibe, mm-hmm. cause I'm like I'm real I'm really out the way, real clandestine. So if I step out, it gotta be it's usually work related. Have you always been like that? Yeah, man. Because first of all, a, a lot of a lot of events and parties, people just fake and they they just on the fake social side and they're not really your friends anyway. So. That's why I just be like, even when I'm going to like power premieres, that's a little interesting for me because it's like hanging out with a bunch of people you don't know. And everybody that's, want a picture. It's different yeah. as opposed to it's like this. Would you rather, it's like, would you rather have, be able to go to your favorite theme park uh, at any time you want, but you you can only go by yourself? Or would you rather go one day with five of your closest friends? So when you put it in that perspective, even when people say, man, why haven't you watched the show yet? That's because I'm not really around my friends to watch it. So to go to premiere with a bunch of people I don't know, I'm really grateful to connect with those people. Mm-hmm. But I also feel just by myself there because I'm just, it's just a bunch of random people. Right. So I don't I don't know how, what to do with that. So I'd stay home. So that's why. <laughs> I'm just going to stay home. Stay home <laughs> do you think you guys are going to get a spinoff? Like, a, you know how they always do. Well, I know, the- there's, I know there is, a, I think, Origin is coming out, which is basically, I think it's like Tommy and Ghost, mm-hmm. how they became. Yeah, that's what I'm so, saying. There might be a... You know, but if there was a some sort of Raising Cane to spin off, man, that would be dope, you know? Uh, we have some really good writers, so I wouldn't be surprised. And this machine that 50 got going... Oh, 50 he, has... He knows how to do it. Killed it when it comes to this. I watch all of the shows. Yeah. People really have stars because yes. of Hell these yeah. shows. Like, Once it's over, there's nothing yeah. to watch. I don't think I had stars before... All of this, but like, you need it now. Yeah, but and now I have it. I, yes, I, I told Fifty. You know, Tommy's mom does have red hair, so if you need someone to play the younger version of her, or if Tommy oh, okay. pop out with a sister. You know, because close mouths don't my get shot. fed. You Hello? Gotta, yeah, you gotta say it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, listen, you guys, tickets are uh, available. How can people get tickets to come to the April Fool's comedy it's show tonight. at the Barclays tonight? It's tonight, man. So it's your last chance. And it's on Ticketmaster.com. It's London Brown. It's Justina. It's Tracy Morgan. It's so many different people mm-hmm. that's on this line. I'm not on the flyer, but don't worry about it. I will be. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if London posted it yet. Yeah, hey, London posted it. Right. I'm about okay. to go talk about it again. Rip, why am I? Man, I didn't know <laughs> that you were a trained dancer either, man. I oh, found yeah, out yeah. so much about you, bro. I did. I didn't know <laughs> you were actual you, a physical trained seven, dancer. Yeah, Mark, I'm not lying. Don't even give me this smile. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just driven off you. I just the, the fact that that even is no, because we were doing our research. And I was like, I didn't know. I, I just because I know you as a comic. <laughs> like I know you as a comic. A trained actor. A trained actor. And I was like a trained dancer too. I was like, that's the whole package right there. That's and there was no shade. There's no shade no, coming no, after that. Hey, so it's always shade attached. It's no shade attached. I would just. Oh, so you are a train dancer, yeah, like the I, tap I, dance kid, or I did. Uh, I took up some. I'm an artist, so I I did a little bit of everything. Wow, sure. I wonder if you'll ever be able to incorporate that into something like, because that's you know. Well, people come to the show. We don't know what's going on. See what I'm saying? You don't know what. You don't know what. Now, that's what I'm trying to say. With tonight. London Brown, you don't know what he might do. A piece, he might do comedy, uh, he might break in a dance, yeah. you know or what? might cook a deal, uh, a <laughs> dish. You know, like, cook a that's the all around you know? entertainer extraordinary. That's what that. That's all I was trying to say. 
You don't know what you're going to get at the Barclays Center because I got some of the most talented people on the world. And I just feel lucky and blessed to be surrounded by London, all my friends, Justina, whether it's good or bad, whether she's talking about me, I still love her to death. When they like, come, I want them to let us know on IG who look thicker now, me or you. Hmm. Currently. That is hilarious. That is hilarious. You call me a baddie at the day. I hate that London turned his head at the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about Ray, did it look like he was looking like the him? thing I no, love? I, no, no, don't, don't see, don't start that. I <laughs> no, turned. I said he turned like it wrong. No, he came about to dab me up. He, he was like, "Rip, you got that." No, the the thing, thing was wrong. <laughs> no, the thing about Ray, crazy. what I love about him, he's the only person I, I know. It. He's the only person I know who got his tummy tuck untucked. He got the reverse BBL. <laughs> so I love that because he's he's really an innovator, a trendsetter. Uh, but thank you guys. It was uh, honestly we. We could sit here and let, watch her roast each other all day. But you can watch it tonight. You look like ice cream falling off the cone with that body. See? <laughs> See? I'm See? He got, he got child tonight, out right here. Tonight, wow, Barclays man. Center. I know he's from Chicago. Our London Brown. London Brown. <laughs> London, <laughs> thank you very post. much for coming in, man. I'm telling you, tonight it's going to be a great, great show, man. I appreciate you coming through doing this. It's going to be amazing. Over 13,000 people live at the Barclays Center. And it's, it's huge. Gonna be, it's Such gonna a big crazy. deal. And in my hometown. Yeah, we're discussing that. we got to oh, get out there. I think it's a great thing because this is the most important year because we're celebrating life. I really didn't think I would be here for another one. When I was in the hospital bed, I really didn't. Mm. And I know that I shouldn't be pressing myself. And I know that right after the show, I'm going to the Mayo Clinic and I got to get the defibrillator put in. So this is a very important, important show. Oh, and I'm still on that list for the heart. So I know whether this is this my last show, but I know it's not. I'm going to give it my all, oh and I'm just goodness. so grateful. Okay, I get, when just, we said yeah, leave yes, it all, I am coming. Well, yeah, when we said leave it all on the stage, we didn't mean your life. Relax. <laughs> give wow. it, you know. You don't, now I feel like I got to come. All right, I'll be there tonight. Shit. <laughs> <See, laughs> man, he's going to be here. Rip is so warm. He's going to be here. It might be my last day on earth. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And London was praying for me, too. So actually, London sent me words. He stopped one of his lives, and it was like, Rip, I'm glad you're doing better, bro. That's good. London's a nice, traditional guy. We love it. It's way up. 